APC has been in the midst of healing ministry for several weeks. We've seen things taking place in this place. Two weeks ago, Pastor taught us on the word of knowledge, and he ended that day with activation. And there were lots of words that came forth and healings that came forth that day. Also, we had Dr. Lee here last week, and that was an awesome time. He shared his testimonies of healing, all of the things that have occurred as he's ministered. He was with us Sunday morning and Sunday night. We had mass ministry, both services, and I know that we had a lot of healings that took place. So this morning, I'm going to pull you out of your comfort zone, and I'm going to ask for those that were ministered to and received healing to raise your hand. Come on. I know that there was more than... Okay. All right. right, I see you now. Okay. Now, I'm going to really take you out of your comfort zone because I'm going to ask you to give a testimony of what God did, If if you're okay with it. You know, the Word of God, (laughs) um, this is is not manipulation, so don't worry. (laughs) The Word of God says, we overcome. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the the word of our testimony. So, let's overcome the enemy this morning, okay? Let's get up here this morning, and, and we're going we're gonna to take some testimonies before I get started. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Uh, like I shared last week, uh, after church, uh, after the first service, I went home. Um, I was working out in the yard, and I slipped, and it felt like a pinched nerve on the left side of my back, and uh, my feet were hurting. They were in severe pain. I didn't even want to come uh, Sunday evening, but we, I was, it was painful to walk across the parking lot, and uh, Dr. Lee, when he laid hands, it felt like a shock up my left side, and uh, my feet, the pain went away. I was able to move my feet, and the, it felt like a pinched nerve, and it was gone. Amen. Yes. of my mom and I had been doing that for about 12 years along with my aunt and um, I after they passed um, it just seemed like my body began to break down it was like almost like a spirit of death (laughs) I mean uh, my back went out (laughs) um, and a couple of other things Um, and it was a very stressful time and um, <clears throat> sometimes you don't even know where you need to be healed until you're under that anointing. And so um, I've been confessing the word, and um, I was feeling somewhat better. I've been praying for it. I was getting to feel somewhat better. And so um, when I came up here, um, Dr. Lee laid hands on me, and um, I didn't feel anything at the time. I didn't go down, (laughs) because I felt, I said, if I went down, I might injure myself some more. (laughs) So um, anyway, he prayed over me, and um, I've been testing it since I went home. Um, I haven't had to take any pain medicine. And so I feel much better. But I think even more important is, um, you know, I didn't even know I was stressed. (laughs) My body was stressed. And it was like, um, it was like a peace came over me. I was able to um, deal with situations a lot better. Um, I was, it was like God had, increase my capacity to uh, handle 
things a lot better. And I just had this inner peace inside. So uh, I think most of the healing took place in, in, in these deep places in me that I didn't even know about. Amen. Hey guys, so uh, last week I was doing some yard work and um, my leg had started hurting like really bad on a Saturday and so I could barely walk. Uh, I was um, actually doing something on, on the drums that Saturday and I was limping all through the church. I couldn't put hardly any weight on it. Uh, so the, the second day, uh, which was Sunday, my leg was still hurting. And so I was like, I've never experienced like healing before. So I was like, I'll just go to the, to the service and get Dr. Lee pray for me. He, he prayed for me and uh, immediately like my, my leg stopped hurting. Um, and we're seven days strong and my, my leg has no pain at all. So it's, it's like, I do not like speaking in public. So the previous uh, word of knowledge, I've been dealing with fear since I was about five. So I came forward and it was a short prayer. It wasn't what I expected. There wasn't speaking in tongues. So I went back to my seat. And after a few minutes, I realized the fear is gone. So I had to test it. So I've not worked for a couple of weeks. So I've got plenty of energy. So I went for a walk. And I walked, oh, about a mile and a half up the road from where I live, and there's this place on the left that's been a little frightening. And I only felt a very little bit of concern or a little bit of fear. And I'm like, okay, I tested it, that's good. So last Sunday, I have never gone down before, and it was like a download from God I'm going to start a new chapter in my life. And things are going to be different. Amen. Amen. Okay, you're right. It was amazing. And I just want to say my balance is back, but my big news is my heart is healed. My heart hey. is healed. <laughs> yes. I'm not very good at this, but I'm going to try. Okay. Um, so Jesus helped me remember his truths about myself when lies about in my brain. Um, he helped me remember them quicker and faster and gave me joy and peace throughout the whole rest of the week. And it was great. <laughs> yes. Yes. Praise the Lord, every Praise the Lord everybody. So my healing happened before Pastor Lee came. Okay. And it happened at the beginning of July. Um, I was having a, a lower back pain on my left hand, on my left side. And it didn't matter where or how I sat or how I laid. It was that pain that shot from my lower back all the way down to my ankle. And uh, I just figured, okay, I'm just getting old. I'm overweight. And, just, you know, you just give in to being old. So that was my answer. <laughs> However, we were, um, we were in a hotel room with my grandchildren down at the beach, and, and the 700 Club came on, <laughs> and they were talking about, you know how word goes forth? And they were talking about the next segment, and they said, let's follow up on what happened to this lady who had lower back stenosis. And my ears perked up, because that's what I have. I have lower back stenosis. And I thought to myself, well, that's, that's what happened. And the woman um, spoke her word, but it was for that woman at that time, which I don't know, years ago, months ago, I'm not sure, but I figured I'm walking in the hotel room, it's 2024, it wasn't for me. And the Holy Spirit said, yeah, that's for you. 
<laughs> that's, that's for you. I said, but Lord, it's, that was a long time ago, and that was for that woman. And yeah, well, you're listening to it now. That's for you. And uh, so I said, okay, Father, I'll accept that. That was for me. Um, that was on a Thursday night. The next night, uh, I, I had an operation on my hand, and uh, I told the, I even told the anesthesiologist, hey, listen, when you put me from, when you place me from one side of the bed to the next bed, be careful because my back hurts. Be careful. We'll, we'll take care of you, Mr. Duff. Okay, cool. Saturday rolls around, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm thinking it was the medicine that they gave me. I came to church Sunday, and I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm thinking, that's the testimony. No, it's the drugs. They haven't worn off yet. <laughs> and... Um, it's the drug of Jesus Christ healing. Amen. And it has not worn off yet. Yeah. So claim your healing, y'all. I don't, I don't care how long ago it was, what word. Yeah. Healing is for now and it is for today. Amen. Amen. I could just stop right now and say amen. Y'all have a good day. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what Romans 10, 17 says. And all of these testimonies help build our faith because we know that God does what he says he's going to do. So what I want to talk about is when Jesus ministered healing the people, he went through towns story after story telling people went through towns story after story telling about the healing power of Jesus Christ. And there were no techie things to do it. That's all I can call them. I guess, you know, um, your computers and Facebook and all of those things that, that we use today that gets the news out and gets, gets it out fast. It had to go by foot to the villages and to the towns so that people could hear that Jesus was moving and he was healing. And one man had his sight restored. And then he was cleansing lepers. And then he was, um, lame men were getting up and walking. And then there's word of the dead being raised. Wow, can you imagine that floating through the villages? And testimonies like these spread like wildfire, probably faster than, than our, our technical devices. Everywhere Jesus went, there was anticipation. Anticipation. Anyone that needed healing came expecting to receive healing. Because he didn't touch anybody. He didn't pray for anybody. And he didn't do anything without something happening. The blind saw, <clears throat> the deaf's ears were opened, the lame danced and walked. It was amazing. And this was the story that got to the woman with the issue of blood. Remember her in Matthew 9, 22? Yeah, she heard that. She heard that and hearing that, it built her faith. And she was so weak and so tired and so weary that she could not barely move. If you can imagine having an issue of blood for 12 years, it would be exacting to say the least. Anyway, she was hearing this and she hears it and she gets out and she, in all of the throngs of crowds of people, she gets in the midst of all of that and pushes and pushes and pushes and pushes till she could just touch it wasn't, I, I need to let him know I'm here and I need healing. It was, if I could just get through these people and just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. That's where her faith was. Where did that faith come from? Testimonies. All over the villages, all over the towns. There was nobody that had negative words to speak about Jesus or his ministry because it went forth in power, in power. So when she touched his garment, he looked at her and he said to her, your faith, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith. 
So this is why I really, really wanted those that had received healing in the last two weeks because we had with Pastor Jeff, he taught on the word, word of knowledge and we had an activation. People started having words of knowledge and we received prayer for the things that were called out. So I know in this place for the last two weeks, we've had healing. It's taking place. This is a good thing. If it's God's will to see his people healed and restored, if it's God's will to see his people totally set free from the strongholds of the enemy, <clears throat> then it's God's desire to see his people fulfill the call that he's placed on their lives. Sharing your testimony opens those doors, opens doors for ministry to those that are being held captive in sick bodies and in sick minds. And I'd like to share a testimony with you all myself this morning. Um, in August of 2022, I did a whole month series on healing on Wednesday nights. And each session we prayed for the sick, God moved, he touched, there were healings that took place during that time. But what I didn't expect was what came from YouTube. I didn't know there was such thing as YouTube TV. I mean, you might look at me and say, she is kidding. I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. You know, what button do you push? I don't know. How do you do that? I don't know. I bought a smartphone thinking it would be smart. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> So long story short, I am not a social media person. It is to me when somebody says, you know, well, all you have to do is download and then you move it here and you move it there. And I'm going, what? And then my friends can tell you that <laughs> because one of them was very helpful to me this week. I have, have been teaching in the years and I was never more blown away than that people actually watched YouTube TV. Who knew? And, you know, and, and I know that sounds so weird. I'm, I'm older and, and more mature, and <laughs> I have children and grandchildren everywhere. So, honest and truly, they are technical and they can help me, and that, that's good. That is really good. So, when these, these services went out on YouTube, I didn't, I, I never even saw the first one, to be honest, and I didn't even really know how it all worked or anything, but um, I realized that, that during that time, people were really, really soul searching for healing. They needed answers, bodies were sick, doctors had given them evil reports, and anyway, it was... Amazing. We went out to eat one night for dinner and we were with my sister and her husband and we sat down and we started eating our meal and this man jumps up and he walks over to me and he puts his hand on me and he goes, you are wonderful. And I looked at him like, what? And everybody at the table looks at me like, who's that? And I had no idea. And he goes on talking to me, and he's telling me all this stuff about how wonderful I am. And I'm looking at Jerry like, get this. <laughs> he thinks I'm wonderful. <laughs> Not really, really. really wasn't quite that way, was it, honey? <laughs> he's like, who's he? <laughs> no, but anyway, it, you know, quite frankly, I was bowled over. And he left the restaurant, never told me his name, never told me why I was so wonderful. And, you know, I'm just sitting there going, and my sister looks at me and she goes, who is that? And I said, I don't know. Well, then I got worried and we got ready to, to leave the restaurant because I thought he might have been a little bit off, you know. <laughs> and, and so I told Jerry, I said, honey, let's not take the regular way home tonight. <laughs> He will tell you that. He's looking at me like, for sure. I'm, he's, he's been gone a long time. I said, I know, but let's just go a different way. <laughs> and so he starts driving the different way. 
And we're riding down the road, and the voice of reason comes right out of his mouth, and he goes, Patty, the guy probably just heard the teaching on YouTube. And I went, oh. And he said, he wasn't talking about you. He was talking about the word. And I'm going, oh, okay. So I still haven't seen the teaching on YouTube. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> tell you I haven't because, I, anyway. Because of all of that, I met some really, really interesting people that came into church and they would look me up because they watched YouTube TV, which I didn't. And, and they would say, you know, we saw you on television and da 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 But one person that I met that I fell in love with was a friend. She became, she became like one of my kids, sweet young lady, and her name was Claudia. Every Sunday, Claudia... <laughs> She would come up behind me and she would start talking. And she would talk, 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 talk. I loved her. She was so, so sweet. And um, she, before the year was out, she, she asked me, she says, Patty, would you come and meet me at school? She was an LU student. And just talk to me for a little while and, and tell me about healing. And so I did. I went over to the school and I met with her and I talked with her for three hours that day, just imparted word, imparted word, imparted word, told her why it was this and why it was that, and God does heal today, and God still heals today, and God's always healed, blah, blah, blah. You know, we went through it for three hours. And so when I finished, she said, when I come back, she was getting ready to leave to go home for um, summer, and she said, when I come back, will you teach a Bible study? And I said, yeah, I will. So we exchanged numbers, and before she left, we were walking out together, and she looked at me, and she said, um, Gabe, you know, anyone that knew Claudia knows that she, had a, she has a vivacious smile. You'll get to meet her in a minute because I'm going to show a video of her. Anyway, when she left, she said, I'm going home this summer. And she said, my brother's best friend has cancer. And she said, she said, this is his second bout with it. And she said, my mom and I are going to go pray. And I just wanted to know how to pray. So um, she went home in the, in, in the summer and came back in the fall and when I saw her again, I said, Claudia, tell me about your, your brother's friend. And she said, we prayed for him, and he was healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, what can you say? She graduated in, in um, May of this year, and she has gone out into the world. This summer, she... Um, she spent 10 weeks traveling all over the Southeast, evangelizing and praying for the sick and seeing lives reborn. Um, just, it's just a whole plethora of, of things that she has, has done. But I pulled some from all of the videos and the feed that she has sent me and we've put together, Sam, bless his heart, put together <laughs> a presentation from Claudia. I want you to see for yourself what's happening in other places and see what God's doing with the lost and the sick. So if we could show that. Hello friends and family. Well, tomorrow is the day that Every Heart Summer Tour begins and I cannot thank you all enough just for 
partnering with me and support and prayer and reaching out and finances. I mean, I'm just so, so blessed by this network of people that is championing this organization to go out and make the name of Jesus known this summer on the streets of America. Um, so I just wanted to send a little update to say thank you um, and to just share how excited I am for what God is going to do tomorrow. Well, actually, tomorrow we all meet for training. We meet in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we'll be there for a week to train. And then after that, there'll be about seven teams of young people split up, going to all different cities in the country. Um, and we'll be on rotation with that for about 10 weeks. And so I will keep you guys updated on the journey. And I still don't have a list of all the cities total, but when I get one, I will send it so that you can hopefully go to a gathering near you. Because y'all, these nights and these days that we're going to be spending in these cities um, are really going to be powerful. We're so expectant for the way that God wants to speak and move and really touch the hearts of so many people. And so if you can get to one in a city near you, please do. Um, but just wanted to share personally from my heart, just such gratitude that God has allowed me to step forth in this for the summer. Um, I also wanted to share that a couple of days ago, I am still needed to hit my fundraising goal. And y'all literally like out of nowhere at a church service, like um, someone generously provided the rest of the funds needed to go on this trip. And so like all of your partnerships um, have been so, so meaningful. But even that one act of just someone like that I just met coming up to me and saying, I want to give like has been such a testament to God's yes for me to walk into this for the summer. Um, and so I am fully funded, which is such a blessing. Um, but I'm also like backed by so many prayers um, and the faithfulness of all of you. And so I just wanted to say thank you and let that serve as a testimony to your own faith that like if God's done it in my life, once he calls you to something like he is going to finish the good work that he has started in you as he says in his word. And so would you be so reminded of the God that is Jehovah Jireh provider and faithful and making me all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus this summer? I know he will. And I'm seriously so excited to to just update you guys along the way of how he continues to do so for me and my team this summer. So I'm going to hopefully send a video update like this once a week just to let you guys know what God's doing. Um, but sincerely, so, so, so blessed by each of you and pumped to go forth um, on Every Heart Tours 2024 starting tomorrow. Love y'all. Thank you so much and talk soon. Hi guys, with my friend. Hi guys. Hi guys, with my friend Mark, my brother. <laughs> I was hoping you'd smile. Um, so Mark, how long could you not see out of your eyes for? How many years? Uh, about four years. Four years because of because of glaucoma, and cataracts, and tumors. Right. Huh. And we were walking past Mark, and we all started to pray and just believe God to heal your eyes. And what did Jesus do for you? Gave me back my eyesight. <laughs> hey. oh, yeah. And now you can yeah. see, and you're gonna.
Amber. I'm 47 years old and I recently got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. This mm -hmm. is my wheelchair that I was using up until about two minutes ago <laughs> because these wonderful young people here, Sarah and Kevin, prayed for me and they prayed uh, the Holy Spirit to come and heal my body. Mm -hmm. And uh, my leg used to be longer than the other one. And they literally sat and prayed for me as my legs were restored to, oh my gosh, the come way on. they used to be. I still can't even believe it. They're the same length again. <laughs> I literally felt a pull in my body as Jesus was pulling on my leg, like literally pulling my leg, but not kidding, like really doing it. <laughs> come <laughs> so, on. So, uh, it's just amazing. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And where did you come from? I'm on the car. <laughs> That's awesome, right? Yeah, let's give, give him a hand. <laughs> they went out, they, that group, uh, they, they were phenomenal, but they went out and fulfilled the call. They went out and laid hands on the sick and preached and baptized, and it, it was just amazing to me. And it has... It was good to be a part of who she was and what she did. But, you know, she thinks that she learned so much from me. I learned so much from her. She was so um, giving and caring and loving, and um, she loved the Lord so much. And when kids, you know... I look at you guys that are college students as kids because I have grandchildren that are older than you. And, and, and anyway, um, you know, and I see the fire that is in our young people. I see the, the hope. You know, you're hearing in the world today all the bad things. We're seeing all the demonstrations and so forth. But I look at you all and I see hope. I see hope for our future. I see hope for our nation. I see hope because you're on fire for God. And don't lose that. Do not lose your fire. Keep it. Keep it and keep going. All right, now, one of the things that the Lord really spoke to me about in putting this together was not so much what's going out and, and what we've seen, but as we go up, when we're in healing services and we go up for prayer, people come up and they don't get healed. And they don't understand why they don't get healed immediately. So I wanted to talk first about hindrances to healing. This is something that can hinder your healing. If you're going up and you are expecting prayer, this is something that can stop the flow. And, and the first one is unrepentant sin. If you have sin in your life and it's unrepentant sin, then that will stop the flow of healing. And so when you go up for prayer, my first tip is ask God, God, is there anything that I need to get out of my way before I go up here for prayer? I, you know, I don't want to hinder, hinder my healing. That is one of the things, unrepented sin. God's faithful and he's just and he forgives our sins and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So never forget that. The second one I want to talk about is unforgiveness. If there's someone in your life that you're holding unforgiveness in your heart against, that can hinder your healing. We are not the judge. And even though this person may have done something, even though... It, and it could be horrendous. But it's going to hurt us if we hold on to unforgiveness. So we have to release it. And in doing that, you know, you just pray, Father, 
I, you know, I, I, I don't want to hold unforgiveness towards this person. Please, please forgive me for doing that. And I just ask that you would work in their lives. Give them to God. Give them to God and receive your freedom there. Go up and get prayer and get healed. Let the Lord move. Jesus says in Mark eleven twenty six that whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. So that is what Jesus said. That is what we are to do. But it will hinder your healing if you go up for prayer and you are walking in unforgiveness. All right, as I prepared this message, I felt the Holy Spirit asking me, what about those that didn't receive their healing? They are hopeless. And he did not say they were hopeless, but that was what went through me. They're hopeless. They, they feel hopeless because I've been there. I've been in healing lines before and stood and had prayer and nothing happened. And, I, and it's happened, you know, quite some time. I had to grow in it. But it happened. And you feel like, what's going on? You know, all these people are getting healed, but I'm not getting healed. I'm walking away the same. And if you don't understand, you can be very, very, very disappointed. It can be very disappointing. And then you're thinking, well... Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe God doesn't love me like he loves Susie. Maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe God doesn't care about me, you know? And I'm not saying that because it's a scenario. I've been there. I have done that. I have the T-shirt, so to speak. And that is, that is what happens when you go up time and time again, and nothing happens, nothing changes. You're still sick. And um, so I, I want to encourage you this morning because I feel like that's what God wanted to do. He doesn't want you to be disappointed. He does not want you to be downtrodden. He doesn't want you to walk around sick. He doesn't. He does not. You know, you... you have to think about it from the Word's perspective, what Jesus has done for us. He's done it not just for me, but he's done it for everyone in this room. And we need to accept that, that fact, that healing is ours. And if you're not receiving healing, then let's be a little introspective and say, okay, Lord, you know, is... There's something here that I need to confess to you so that this will happen. Or, or maybe it's just the fact that you have felt hopeless and you feel like, you know, this is never going to happen and you get into unbelief. This, is, this happens. I'm saying it because I, I've lived it. Pastor John, when we used to minister, he had this, um, this word that he would use. And, you know, people say, well, every time there's an altar call, I've got to go up. I, everybody goes up. You know, she's been up 50 times. She should have been healed by now. You know, you think that. And, well, I didn't think it, but people thought it because I was probably the one getting the 50 prayers. <laughs> but anyway, he said, what you need is chutzpah. Chutzpah. <laughs> chutzpah. And, you know... We would just kind of giggle and laugh at him because he'd say, you need chutzpah. And we came to realize that what chutzpah was, you want to know? You want the definition of chutzpah? The definition of chutzpah is when you stay persistent and tenacious. Chutzpah. He didn't care if we went up for prayer 152 times before we received our healing. He wanted us to keep that tenaciousness and that persistence in chutzpah. So he would say, you need chutzpah. And we had one lady that was in our congregation and she would go all the time and, and he would say, she's got chutzpah. 
chutzpah. She was so determined to get what she came to get from the Lord. You know, when you have chutzpah, you're like the puppy that you've bought, and you give them a little toy to play with, and they latch onto it, and you can actually pick them up, and they don't let go. Chutzpah. That's chutzpah. Another example I thought about, too, was in tug of war. You know, have you ever been in a big tug of war? You've got people on one side and people on the other, and, and you're all pulling and fighting and pulling and fighting, and you're not going to let go of the rope no matter what, and people are almost laying on the ground. They're pulling it so hard. That's chutzpah. You don't let go until you win. So that's what you do, chutzpah. So remember that. Remember that. We never, ever want to lose hope. We never, ever want to be hopeless. Jesus doesn't want us to be hopeless. He is our hope. He is our hope. The enemy will come, and he will try to steal your healing. He'll try to fill your head with lies. Well, do you really think you were healed? Um, I don't know. And beep, hit you with a symptom. <gasps> Uh-oh, maybe I'm not healed. Nah, you're not healed. Don't, don't, don't play that game with him. Don't do it. Don't listen. When you hear the enemy saying, God doesn't love you enough to heal you, or this healing stuff works for some people, but not for you, that's wrong. It's a lie. It is a lie from the pit of hell. So don't listen to it. Do not listen. I want you to, to know the voice of the enemy and the voice of God, they're totally different. But how do you do that? You know the word. Get in your Bible and know the word. If you know the word, you're not going to buy into the, the enemy's lies and his schemes. Know the word and you will not fall prey. And when he speaks lies into your head, speak the word. He says you're not healed. Say, well, now wait a minute. I believe it goes this way. Jesus took my sicknesses and my diseases on the cross for me. And Jesus also bore stripes on his back for my healing. So by his stripes, I'm healed. That's how you do it. That's not a lie. That's the truth. That is the truth. And we all are entitled to what our Father has given us through his Son, Jesus Christ. So don't listen to the adversary. I have learned over the years that if you listen to the enemy, you're going to fall into sickness again. You're going to go right back where you were. And I know that God sent his word and healed us. He healed me. I know that he bore my sicknesses. I know that he carried my pain. And that's what I declare declare, declare. That is what I declare when the enemy hits my mind that way. I'll just say, mm, no, by his stripes I'm healed. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord my God. That's what it says. So when you get, go up to receive prayer, my suggestion is check your heart and put all doubt and unbelief away. Don't go up in doubt and unbelief. That is not of the Lord, and you're not going to receive that way. Do not let your hope be stolen by the enemy. Proverbs 13, 12 says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. <clears throat> if you go up and you are going up for prayer and you don't get it and you go sit back down and you, you just kind of roll around in your, your little pity party, that's going to make your heart sick. Just say, Lord, I know, that, I know that you've touched me. I know I'm, I'm, I'm being healed. I'm being healed. Healing sometimes doesn't happen like that. Sometimes it is a, a long process. But you stand, you learn to stand when you are in the midst of that long process. When, when you are told something is going to happen and and you know that you've received healing, and you are expecting it now, and you don't get it, it's easy to lose it right there. And how do you do that? With your mouth. 
your mouth. You make confessions that are wrong. You're not speaking hope and health of yourself. You're speaking doubt and unbelief. So my, 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 um, my recommendation is when that happens, put your hope in God. He will sustain you. He will sustain you. Whether you have the manifestation of healing or not, that does not de- negate the fact that God's word is true. It doesn't. And it never will. It never will. The enemy will try to put those thoughts in your mind. He will try to reason with you, and you think it's yourself thinking. That's how you know the voice of the enemy. And he always speaks against the word of God. It's, it's twisted truth. And that's what he does. He's called the father of lies. The father of lies. First Timothy 12, 12 tells us that we have to fight the fight of faith. And if it was not a fight, we wouldn't have to fight it. Faith is a fight. You have to fight the fight of faith. When we are in a war, we're not wrestling. Well, we are wrestling against flesh and blood. When we are warring spiritually, it's not a flesh and blood fight. We are warring against principalities and powers and spirits of wickedness that are in the heavenly places, dominions of darkness, powers of the air, spirits sent to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what we're wrestling against. That's what we're fighting against. So there's an army there that comes against the people of God, but greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world And you know what, guys? We have angel armies. You know? We have angel armies. So don't forget that. And you know what? We have to go into warfare fully armed. And I'm not talking about with AK-47s. I know a little bit about those. We're not not going into war with an AK-47. We're going into war with a sword. It's called the sword of the spirit. It's the word of God. That's what weapon we use. Whack. Whack. Yeah. I mean, that's what we have to do. And I'm getting some of the funniest looks. Okay. But it's true. Go look it up when you put the full armor of God on. Sword of the spirit. Word of God. You, you could be the three musketeers for that matter. Deuteronomy 31.8 says this, and I'm going to bring this to an end very shortly. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I, the Lord your God, am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. What more can you say? God watches over his word to perform it. It's alive, it's powerful, it's your weapon. Use it. In other words, he makes sure that his word is fulfilled. Now, I want you to get the word working in your life and watch hope arise. And if it's God's will and desire to see you healed, it's God's will and desire to see you fulfilling the purpose that he's given you, he does not want you to be sick. I repeat that. He does not want you to be sick. Now, repeat after me. He does not want me to be sick. Okay, that's good. He's not wishy-washy, I'll heal you today, but you're going to be sick tomorrow. That's not God. God's not like that. God has given you a future, and he's given you a hope. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Work the word. How do you work the word? Speak it, speak it, speak it. When it comes out of your mouth, it has power. The word of God has power. 
It has power. Work the word with your mouth. And watch, no, work the, work the word with your mouth, but watch your words, what you're speaking. Speak faith and do not speak fear, do not speak doubt, do not speak unbelief. And hold fast the profession of your faith and don't waver. Don't waver, for God is faithful who promised. Okay, that's all I've got. Amen. Amen. What I want to, um, to tell you is that we will have prayer teams up here on my right and on my left this morning to pray for you. If there are any in here that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't walk out the door without him. He's better than the American Express card. <laughs> and if you need healing in your body, ask. Come up and get prayer because they will pray for you. Be gone, be filled, be blessed. Have a good day.